Okay, uh, I got the camera a little higher. Got some people who were not pleased by that angle. I think the reason why I had the angle lower than I was looking down, I wanted you guys to see my watch when I spoke, but I think on balance this is better. So uh, today I want to talk about uh, being naughty at Christmas. I have been very naughty at Christmas. And I want to talk about retiring from my job in two years. So let's first talk about being naughty. Um, four months ago, I pledged to not buy a watch for five months. So here we are, four months later. And today, I was very naughty. I bought a watch. And I bought it on a, at a place that many of you are familiar with. It's called Seiya Japan. And the watch is being marketed by Seiko as a 1968 retro reissue. And the, uh, the model number is SBDC025. It's all stainless steel. And it's 42 millimeters. And it has the same movement as my Captain Willard. The 6R35, I believe. 70 hour reserve. And so with this watch, if you count the watch that was given to me as a gift, I'll have nine watches, and the watches actually divide neatly into three categories, three, three watches per category. I'll have uh, three straight quart watches, pure quartz. I'll have three solar quartz watches and three mechanical watches. Three, three, three. And based on that, based on that clean pattern, I guess I have to stop. I guess I have to stop being naughty. And uh, I guess this SBDC uh, 025, which I predict will have a better bracelet than the Willard, and will have better loom than the Willard. It will be my crown jewel piece. It, it will probably unseat the Willard. Doesn't mean I'm selling the Willard. It doesn't even mean that it's a, a better watch than the Willard. Because the Willard is its own style. It's its own thing. I'm not going to compare an apple to an orange. But most likely, if I had to predict, I would say the 025 will be my new crown jewel all around. Who knows? Maybe it won't be. Can I tell you guys something? I have an 065 Scion Blue. A lot of you guys have seen it. It's uh, 44 millimeters. This is 42. And I love it. It's great. But I'm always relieved when I put the Willard back on. There's something about the Willard. Captain Willard. So Maybe, as much as I'll love the, uh, the new watch coming in, the 025, maybe it won't unseat the Willard. We'll see. But uh, that watch that's coming in, the crown, like the Willard, is at 4. I don't buy 3 o'clock crowns anymore, as many of you know. All right. So, non-watch pivot. If you're not into my non-watch talk, it was, it's been nice talking to you. It's been a pleasure. Good morning. I've been naughty. Santa Claus is mad at me because I violated my oath to wait five months. I did it in four, but I guess because it's Christmas, maybe some generosity will be allotted to me. So, uh, all right. So, uh, end, of end of the semester, I had a final Zoom office hour, and two of my students showed up. And, you know, they're, they're A students. They, they didn't need any help with their papers. Their papers were already turned in. So we were just talking. We were, they were being really nice. They, were just, they just wanted to talk to me. For my final office hour, we were talking about our favorite TV shows. <clears throat> the Boys. And we were talking about Breaking Bad. And when we talked about Breaking Bad, I was reminded of a town in New Mexico where they shot Breaking Bad, Rio Rancho. And I said to my students, uh, yeah, my wife and I are looking at properties in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, because, you know, I could buy a house for less than half what I could sell my Los Angeles house for. And uh, my student, she says to me, McMahon, you can't retire. 
And I go, yeah, I'm planning on retiring in like two years. And she goes, you're too young. You, 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 this is the best class I took, blah, 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 blah. And I said to her, yeah, that's a tragedy of retirement. You retire at the peak of your powers. That's how it works. Like, it's 2020 now, and I've been teaching college writing since the 1980s. If you think about it, I've been teaching in five different decades. That's a lot. And uh, one thing I can tell you guys about teaching, it took me a long time to get it right. It took me five decades to get it right. And I'm a lot better now, after five decades, at, at coming up with writing assignments that my students like, that are compelling, that, make, that activate their brain and their imagination. For example, we wrote about tacos. Should taco recipes be authentic? Or should we allow recipes to evolve and synthesize different cultures? Can we culturally appropriate uh, original traditional recipes? And it was a whole uh, thing on cultural appropriation. And we, uh, we read uh, Gustavo Ariano, who says cultural appropriation is fine. That restaurant people, they survive by taking other people's ideas and building on them. But it was a very nuanced argument, and they loved it. And I'm better at coming up with writing assignments. I'm also better at explaining the writing process brick by brick. It took me a long time to get that down. And also, my classroom persona. I'm going to say something that's going to shock you. Students love it when an instructor is angry. But, I have to give you a caveat. Your anger has to be like a comedian's. It has to be a processed anger, a curated anger. The students have to know that you're kind of meta. You're kind of like, create. you've created an angry persona. You're not angry in a raw sense, like, oh, I'm angry right now. And I think when I first started teaching, a lot of my anger that I, we're all angry because, you know, life is frustrating and we all deal with anger. And I think that's why we're like comedians, because... They give us catharsis for our anger. But um, I think when I first started teaching, I was very intimidating because I was insecure and my anger was raw. What doesn't necessarily mean I was angry at my students when I first started teaching, but my anger would resonate in things I said, and I think it could be off-putting. And I think as I got older, my students could tell I was being more of a comedian creating an angry persona. So I got really good at that, and I'm retiring now at the, at the peak of my powers. And uh, I want to tell you why I believe I should retire at the peak of my powers. I'm sure I'll, I mean, based on everything I can see, I knock on wood, I should be healthy in two years when I retire. But I've talked to professors who've retired, and they all tell me, dude, I waited a year too long. That last year was a slog, bro. I hated my life. I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be like slogging through my last year. Number one. Number two, I want to be healthy when I retire so I can adjust to retirement. I mean, retirement's going to be a huge adjustment. I'm not, you know, I think I have a healthy skepticism about the challenges of retirement. I'm not going to be as relevant. Uh, you know, I'm not going to have a job that makes me relevant. I'm going to have to find relevance in other ways or, or deal with not being relevant. But uh, I have to create a new uh, structure and routine. The good news is I love structure and routine. I thrive on it, and I believe I will adhere to one. But it, I want to be healthy when I make that adjustment. Uh, the other thing is uh, I want to avoid the embarrassment of cognitive decline in the classroom. And I, I want the pride of being strong when I retire. Eric Dickerson was a Rams running back. I mean, it seemed like... He averaged seven yards a carry. I mean, I, I remember one season I'd watch him, seemed like he was like averaging 11 yards a carry. But anyways, I want to retire when I'm averaging seven yards a carry, not 1.2 yards a carry. That's not cool. So I want, I want to finish this talk with a story from the early 1990s. There was a professor, he couldn't let go of his job. He needed to. He was in serious cognitive decline. 
he would uh, sit in class and he would just fall asleep in class. And I remember one time he fell asleep and there was one student left in the class. She was filing her nails and the dean walked into the classroom and the guy was sleeping and the dean whispered in his ear, it's time to go. It's time to go. Come on, get up. It's time to go. I don't want to be that guy. So tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Are you into retiring at the peak of your powers? I ho and I hope you can. I hope financially it's a possible situation. And uh, will you forgive me for being naughty at Christmas? Will Santa Claus forgive me for being naughty at Christmas? Do you like the new angle? Even though you can't see the watch as much. The new angle... New watch, new retirement policy, it's all going on today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I am out.